Hello beautiful people, it's Mizko here and in this video I'm going to show you 5 Tedly tips to help you not suck as a UI designer. Let's dive in! Hwah! So let's take a very quick look at this card design that I have created. A very, very common UI pattern that you would see on Dribbble. And by the way guys, if you use Dribbble as a source of inspiration for UI, please take it with a grain of salt because really a lot of these design patterns are not realistic. So, without further ado, with this card design, let's imagine we are a customer on an e-commerce platform that sells clothes. And we are browsing through the categories and we stumble across a card design that will represent all the different categories. Now, this card specifically shows to the customer that this is for the casual clothing category. Now, I'll give you a couple of seconds. I'm gonna have a very quick sip of my green tea. And while I do that, have a think about why is this execution of a card design terribly wrong and it is an atrocious execution for UI designers. So I'll give you a very quick second to think about it. All right guys, without further ado, the reason why this is a terrible execution and it is a very sucky UI is because we have specifically chosen a beautiful photo to be placed in this card without considering the fact that it needs to be scalable and it needs to accommodate any type of photos that we are going to be using in this project. So, what if we had a photo that had a light background? The bottom half of the photo had a bit of a, a glare to it or there was some sort of white background and you couldn't read the text that was on top. So, what would be two, I'm gonna give you a quick quiz, what would be two solutions that we can do right away to fix this issue? So, I'll give you a couple of seconds, I'm gonna have another quick sip of my green tea. Guys, Gamecha green tea, it is the bomb. Guys, so. All right, hopefully you have two quick ideas. Now, this is the approach that we should be taking if you wanted to go down this visual style. So first off, you should have a consistent white background or a high contrast background for the text. So no matter what photos you use when you hand this over to developers, it's going to work. Or you can actually take the text out of the photo so it's always on a consistent background. Now it is very, very important, very, very important for you to consider these because it is a very amateur mistake if you hand these designs over the previous designs over to a developer to integrate. You need to make sure you are proactive and you're thinking ahead of your designs and you're considering what it would be like when we're going into implementation. Now, the very second example of a sucky UI design. Take a look at this quick app that I've mocked up for you guys. So obviously this screen is, for example, like an iOS app. It allows the user to set a password and then they can continue to go creating their account. Now, have a very quick think about this scenario here. This scenario of what the user is currently doing, what is inaccurate and why is this a sucky UI design? Have a quick think about it, guys. So, so let me quickly reveal to you why this is a sucky UI design. So, obviously, here the user, the design is specifically trying to communicate to the team and to developers that someone, the user, is inputting a password. Now, what we need to do is whenever we are showing interactions, we need to work with realistic apps, realistic scenarios, and realistic situations. So, if someone is typing on an app, we need to show the keypad. These are very basic fundamentals that a lot of designers overlook and especially on Dribbble. And I'm not hating on Dribbble because I hate Dribbble. I'm hating on Dribbble because it is setting the wrong expectation and guidance for new UI designers. So whenever you are working in an app, whether it's iOS, it's Android, or you're doing inter interactions on a web app, make sure to think about what is the actual interaction that's happening and what do we need to show on the screen to accurately depict the right situation for the use case that we are designing for. So hopefully that gives you another quick tip on how to not suck, guys. And if you appreciate that, make sure to gently smash that like button. And also, don't forget to be cool. All right, guys, so the third example of how to improve your UI design skills. I want you to take a very quick look at this form, and I'm not gonna reveal it right away. Have a quick think about it. There's no need to rush. Once again, I'm gonna have a quick sip of my green tea, major tea. Now, whoa, this one furiates me. 
And I see this happen a lot with junior designers and anyone that's sort of new to the industry. Consistency, guys. Consistency, 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 consistency. Or oh, if you say that too many times, it really uh, does a funny thing with your tongue. So if you take a look at this design, on the left-hand side over here, we have some spacing that's consistent with the top. But if you take a look on the right-hand side and on the bottom of this, whoa, that consistency is way off par. We have to make sure that we have details and clarity on all the spacing and make sure all the elements are very consistent. The second thing is that these form fields are not aligned at all. We have to make sure whenever we are working in our designs, we have to make sure things are consistent and things have proper alignments. This is a fundamental foundation that you need to focus on when you first start out as a UI designer. And if you want to produce very beautiful and polished UI, you know what you need to do? You need to keep things aligned. You need to keep things consistent and you need to keep it beautiful like this. So make sure you have all the spacing consistent, make sure all your items are aligned very, very beautifully. And this will bring a lot of consistency and polish to a lot of your designs. So if you're thinking, how do you align things really quickly in Figma, make sure to check my video and gently smash that link above about how to utilize auto layouts because this is the key to creating scalable and very scalable and pixel perfect and well aligned components within all your UI designs. And it's gonna be an absolute godsend and time saver. If you appreciate that, gently smash that like button. All right guys, with this form, with the fourth quick tip to help you improve your UI designs, you might have thought, guys, this already looks so beautiful. What else is there that needs to be improved that needs improvement? Well, let me assure you, this is still not Mizco approved just yet, guys. Have a quick think about this form. Ignore the fact that I've actually created a duplicate email input field there. That's by accident. Aside from that, what else on this form really infuriates me? Think about it. Empathize with Mizco. Just think about what would really just annoy the S H I double T out of me. Have a quick think about it, guys. All right, guys, if you didn't think about this one, it's a little bit of a tricky one. Anyone for that's new into UI design. Contextual copy. So when you take a look at this design here, yes, it does look clean. Yes, it does look beautiful. Obviously, Mizco designed it, so it's gonna be well designed. But if you think about it, if someone came into this form field with the intent of wanting to, for example, change their password or change their first name, last name, or update their email, they need to scan through a lot of small sized and very similar fonts on this page. What we need to do is actually provide more hierarchy. So when someone lands on this form or on this page, they can quickly scan really easily, but then also see a clear separation with, within each section. So let me show you what I mean. From what we just did with the form and just by providing a little bit more con of contextual copy, meaning the little wor the words that we're writing on the page, personal details, manage email address and change password. One, we are adding hierarchy on the page. We are helping the user's eye sort of digest and process what is happening on this page. Second, we are actually telling them specifically what each section is about without having to process all the small UI and the little words on the page. With big clear headings, we are telling them exactly, this is personal details, this is managing your email address, and this is changing your password. Even if a user does not specifically read those titles and they're looking at just the input field, in their peripherals, within the eye, it does some sort of magic thing and they can sort of read and see that this is about managing my, managing my email address. And they don't need to go through and work their mind even further just to figure out where they should update their email. So when you are working with UI, focus on the UI, make it look beautiful, make it look delightful, make it usable, but don't forget that usability and delight does come through copywriting as well. And a lot of UI designers forget about that. The devil is in the details, guys. So the very last tip to help you not suck as a UI designer, guys. Very quick one. Here we have a modal, and I want you to have a very quick think about it. What about this modal really irritates me? And I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Quick sip, if you don't mind me. All right, guys, 
here it is. Before we jump into it, there is an issue with the number of words on the first line. And the second thing for me is that there are too many different font sizes on this modal. And this is a very simplified example. When UI designers are designing an entire page, so many times have I seen UI designers using up to five to six to seven or more different font sizes on a single page or design. Now this creates a lot of clutter and it's very consistent and it sticks out like a sore thumb for anyone who is pedantic about details. So what we wanna do is first to fix the issue of having too many words on one line. The average, the ideal number of words you do want to have on one line to make sure it's legible and easy to read is between nine to 12 words. And then what we wanna do is we wanna reduce having one, two, three, four different font weights and sizes to potentially maybe two to three, all right? So here's what we will do. Reduce the modal, make it more digestible, and reduce the number of font styles and sizes on the modal. So if you appreciated all these five tips, one, two, three, four, five, to help you not suck as a UI designer, make sure to gently smash that like button, guys. Oh, and by the way, before I let you guys go, I have officially released version 1.2 of my designership design system for Figma. So if you are looking for a well-equipped, advanced, scalable design system to help you kickstart every single project, or even if you are an in-house designer looking for a design system to leverage to help build out the design system for the company that you work for, make sure to check the link in the description. I've also left you a juicy coupon to get 10 bucks off my design system. Oh, and if you have any more questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I have been spending hours, literally hours, replying to every single comment that has been coming through. I love hearing from you guys, so make sure to leave a comment. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the video very soon. Mwah!